Hello everyone. Uh, I'm Kurun Jalmi, uh, one of the core team members. And in this session, I'm going to walk through, give you a walk through on what are the new features that are part of current stable 4.6 and what are some of the highlights that are going to come in 4.7 release. Before uh, we get this started, how many of you use 4.6 till now? Few. 4.7? Just one, all right. So, so these are the few highlights, uh, the main features that we added in 4.6, repeating events, sales tax, invoices, and CVML improvements. So what I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of some of the features, and then if, at the end, if time permits, I'm gonna give a quick demo of all of them. All right. So first thing is a repeating event. So in 4.6, we added an ability wherein you can configure for a uh, activity to be repeating. For example, if you have weekly meetings every Wednesday at 9 a.m., so you can create a meetings, weekly meeting activity, and then you can set up a repeating start and end date. Similarly for tasks or any other activities. And then once you create, you'll get this kind of confirmation screen, this recurring continue and the activities would be created automatically. You can create for a certain period or it could be N duration. You can set up the same things. We added the same settings for events. So now we can create recurring courses or recurring events when you have start date repeating and some of the basic settings like every month repeats what day ends, and also you can configure is like exclude. So some of the time you want to exclude few things. So system automatically detects what date it should consider, what should it exclude, and it automatically creates and recurring events activities. Uh, so if you have any question, just feel free to raise the hand and I can just answer that. Another major thing which we added in 4.6 is the sales tax uh, VAT invoicing feature. CV now allows you to define your invoicing prefix or generate credit notes. And these are some of the text which you can add. And you can define what kind of formats you want. In a configuration screen, once you configure it, you define which are the financial accounts associated with your VAT. In this case, I have configured a tax rate of 20%. Then you define your what account it belongs to, VAT rule, which is liability account type. And once you are configured, you'll be able to see the tax. So you can, this is a configurable setting. So you can either say it's includes tax or it's additional tax. And this supports for events and contribution pages. So this is the configuration pages. It also supports backend. So once you add it in the system, if you see in the backend, it's going to show total tax amount, total is the total amount, and the exact details about it. You can generate this nice looking invoice wherein you get this payment advice and all the calculation. You, this is a template, so you can potentially include your own organization logo and details about organization. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is the CV mail interface. So we had a lot of uh, back and forth about some complaints about how CV mail interface was not user friendly. So there was a big uh, discussion about combining a lot of things. Some people were not in favor of that. So we came up with this a unified idea of simplifying the CV mail interface into two steps. One is you define your mailing in this in this new Ajax based interface and second step is you review and send it. So one major thing which we done during this experiment was we implemented this entire interface using some of the modern technologies like AngularJS. So it's much more developer friendly and much more easier and much more much faster, much better. 
and then in the second step you review it and then submit your mailing some people like the old interface so we retain similar layout so where you have three options you first compose the screen then you options and then you send it and then we have some other people who are a bit lazy like me who wants everything on one page so it's like you have all the settings in one page and you create your mailings and just hit submit so so this is a classic example how we are making use of modern technology is uh, specifically angular wherein you can define your own layouts in the system and a same interface can be rendered into three different ways this is one of the example which we are trying to take to the various forms in cv so you can actually configure lot of forms into various layouts what is preferable to you still uh, it's still in early stages so we have just implemented this for this one interface so we are going to implement more in future any questions so far we also added a uh, cmail ab testing uh, in feature so basically you can create ab testing based on three parameters you can choose uh, different subjects from addresses or entirely different messages in this case uh, in second configuration screen you oops yeah so in this you select why recipient and what's the percentage you want to send to mailing a mailing b and rest on final p so you configure your mailings this is a mailing a so in this example i selected uh, i want to send ab testing based on subject so there is subject a subject b and then finally you configure and send your mailings and so uh, just to recap how many of you are aware of ab testing process all right just just for the uh, explaining it better uh, so ab testing is a so when you have a news let's say you want to send a newsletter uh, to your constituents but you are not sure which one is the best and you have two variations of it and variations could be based on subject from addresses or messaging and you uh, and so what ab testing allows you to do is you configure those two variations of cv mail and then based on the result so you send it to a percentage of constituents that's in this example i said 20% send a 20% you send b variation and at the end of the this you'll able to come you'll get this result wherein and then these are the various parameters you can look at it like how many were open how many were click throughs and you can choose these parameters and select which was the winner out of a and b and send the winner to the rest of the constituents so that you are targeting your rest of the constituent which is the best mailing based on the stats rather than based on the guess your guess so this is a uh, one of the stats where you can uh, look for and how many were the these are the success parameters you can decide based on deliveries and all. another feature which we added oh, is pledge entry bad a uh, pledge payment batch entry so we had earlier contribution and membership besides that we added pledge payment so now we can uh, record so once you select the contact you you'll be able to see what are the open pledges for that particular contact and then you can uh, make a payment against the outstanding balance we introduced uh, this new pcp notifications features wherein here you can we added this extra setting where you, you can decide whether owner wants to receive notification or send to all owners or no don't send any notification because i really when i'm when i'm doing a pcp page or when i'm running a campaign i want uh, to receive an email when someone donates to my page so this feature allows you to uh, achieve that functionality this is the next uh, update screen so uh, we did a complete uh, overhaul of report layout 
uh, this is how the report section looked before and now this is how it looks so we made it more user friendly categorize it so that it's much more <coughs> options are much more visible for end users and much cleaner how many of you use schedule reminders few okay. so we added this uh, new membership renewals and now you can configure you can set birthday anniversary reminders so now you can just birthday greeting based on birth date and all and then you can send them a birthday greetings which is a lot of people wanted this so it's quite a neat i was i think and we added a lot of these minor tricks and minor things which are like auto complete search filters more in place editing uh, more advanced search layout improvements so all this like we are focusing more in terms of making a system more user friendly it is a few steps that are taken to make it more user friendly much more clearer interface where you define a permission what each is for show payment processes when it's available finally better handling for decimal points i know for some of you this is a big was a big pain so then show various details about contacts so far any anything on 4.6 good so let's move along so these are few uh, new things that are coming in 4.7 or which as josh mentioned for we are already in alpha cycle and hopefully based on the feedback from the community we will able to get stable out soon so few important things which we added as a part of 4.7 one of the major improvements or did you entire interface changes uh, thanks to deepak and veda consulting for doing this amazing interface overall so now like earlier did you interface was good i would say because i had worked on it so <laughs> <laughs> but now it's much better and much cleaner where it's more user friendly and more user driven where you can filter by context and then you can there are various actions available out here which is much more scalable much much easier than the earlier options which allows you to do much uh, bigger actions in easy in easier manner this already part of alpha release we also added uh, we found uh, we thought that a uh, lot of time like uh, people complain oh my mail is not being sent but then you figure out they are not actually configured their their cron job so we decided that we'll add a something called a status page where all the commonly used updates of which we think will be able to have this page so for example like here it gives you message saying that cron is not running or debug is unable outbound email is disabled so and it's this is all like uh, api driven so if you are developing an extension you can plug it in your extension parameters out here and it will automatically display here so it's a nice cool status page just like some of the cmss do where you just look at this and make sure that everything is green and we added this like sometimes notifications like if if you are developing and sometimes notifications get irritating so we added a button just like alarm you can snooze the notification up to a certain time and it won't show you there and so it's much easier when when you are in the development cycle uh we did a complete uh, imp uh change how we integrated uh, editors visivic editors so now we are uh, cvsm by default ships with one of the most popular editor called ck editor we moved other editors to an extension for example tiny mc mc is available as an extension now and we added this configuration screen so now we can configure which are buttons you need and then it's just a drag and drop thing so it's much easier you don't have to mess with the code to get whichever important settings for you are Uh, this uh, we did a again a uh, major restructuring which is 
this is more in terms of code the uh, specifically for the developers who are interested uh, payment processor restructuring which is a complete like uh, I would say a surgical surgery complete surgery of the entire payment processor code wherein uh, we added better support for recurring tokens like stripe payment processor uh, we modularized the entire the way payment processor work so now going ahead if you want to integrate anything new payment processor it's is pretty doc for straightforward and documented process and hopefully it will be much more scalable and as always we added a uh, lots of tests so that we know payments are an important part of for each organization to ensure that we are not breaking any payment uh, going ahead and and one of the one of the user driven which is for back office we are supporting now various other payment processes earlier it was just one of these we are uh, modified and changed a few reports like this is an example of activity report where you want to know how much time uh, people have spent on meeting a phone call so we had a duration how many instances were of the meetings were there so it's just an example how we have improved few of these reports we introduced new uh, scheduled reminders for contribution pages and contribution types so now you can configure if I get a donation to one of my contribution pages and if it's completed send an me automatic message saying that XYZ alright uh uh, we made uh, some of the reports more meaningful. We added a few things, modes, median, average, median for those math gigs. For me, all looked same initially, but then I had to Google and figure out what's the difference between all three of them. I know now, hopefully. And we added like search by premiums, which is much more uh, meaningful for people who use premiums and interesting. Few other improvements include uh, search tasks, some of the volunteer work on improving the task option, making it more meaningful and giving, making it more helpful for end users trying to understand. Some of these encoded messages were hard in the past. And most importantly, it's now alphabetically ordered. Earlier it was big jumble. <laughs> This is, uh, we added this new getting started widget. It's another direction wherein we want end users to get started with CVSM much more easily and much faster. Wherein like you have uh, handy links for the documentation, where's the configuration checklist, your extension directory, where to ask questions. And this is uh, right, once you install it, you can get this widget on your dashboard, which is, uh, nice I would think and lastly uh, I would like to just uh, thank all these people who helped uh, to get uh, this release and some of them sponsor some of the features which are part of 4.6 and 7 all right so I'm going to just quickly switch to the demo of some features This is interesting. Mm. 
All right, this might be easier. All right, so uh, I'm quickly walk through first uh, the VAT features. So in configuration screen, we added a new CV contribute settings, and you get this. You didn't see this. <laughs> I swear it was working few times, few minutes before. All right. Yeah. So here, just enable invoicing. You can specify a notes or what messages you want. You can configure what kind of display you want, whether your texts are included, whether you want to show or you don't want to show them. Save it and once you create it, then you create your Let's say I'm going to add a financial type, VAT full rate, then you add a financial accounts to it. Sign it. Liability is tax. So after you define your accounts. And you can define the financial type which you created. Mm, and did I miss something? Is a financial account. Yeah, there you go. So there are just two steps process where you can configure your sales tax. So this format is, is dependent on how we are defined in our system. So if we change if we change the configuration.
then the contract changes. Uh, now let's register someone. After you register, you will able to view. Go to arbitration. So either here you will able to invo uh, email the invoice or you can say print invoice. And you'll get this nice looking invoice. And for some reason, so there's also an ability for some reason, let's say if I did this. And let's say refund it. So here you can actually uh, generate a credit note for the same. And again it shows the credit, how much was there, what was credited and so if you had credited partially it would have given the partial amount which was credited so oh uh, let's look at the activity bit let's say i want to create an weekly meeting weekly meeting every day at maybe 10 30 repeating start date today repeat every week repeat on there's no ending for 30 instance oh. so it shows when it's what are the various repeating activities going to create and once it continue it will just create them Right. So it shows and it also displays out how much what details are great. Yeah, Michael, it's a question regarding invoices. I'm coming back to okay. because change subject. Mm. Yeah. Regarding invoicing, do you have tick 
sequence number. Like in France, we our invoices need to have a number. You cannot have any holes in the number. They need to be to, to follow. Do you have that? Yes. So for sequence, we uh, use the contribution ID, which is a sequence. So okay. it will be always unique. And uh, you can specify a prefix, like by default, like I'll show you. It allows you to specify the prefix for invoicing, INV and for credit note CN. So you can specify anything and it will be like what? And then to it's the contribution ID. Yeah. Yeah, so it will be always unique. It's a sequence like next 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, okay. and you, you wouldn't have any uh, like holes? You won't? Like any, uh, the numbers are following and you cannot have. Uh, no gaps in the sequence. If you cancel yeah. an invoice. Yeah, you won't get the uh, same with the same number because it's always unique. But you won't have a, you won't have a another with the same number. No, it will be still be unique, but you will have a gap in the sequence, and that's right. not allowed in, in yes. France. And Belgium, in Belgium either, yeah. So I, I think in that case you should, I don't know, maybe not delete. It's it's more policy how you use it, right? So it's in a system if you say I'm not going to delete and just cancel it, yeah. rather than deleting it. Oh, so you don't delete it because you cancel it and say and why it was cancelled. Yes, if you cancel it. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. still, if somebody created a test contribution or something mm -hmm. in between, you can would have a gap in your. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's true. Uh, I've used the uh, new invoice, and really, it's really nice, especially mm -hmm. the layout with the invoice and everything. Um, and I've, I've installed it in a few places. Uh, the problem I'm, that's always coming back to me is you're not storing an invoice date. Yeah, they always want the invoice date to stay the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's it, it's it's not. It creates an activity, and the original PDF is stored. Mm -hmm. But if you go and reprint and you reprint, you get a different invoice date. And it's an issue with all my clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need a static invoice date. I think it's there somewhere in the system, but it's just that it's being because. Invoice date is basically when you created an invoice, right? So yes, it's it, it also sets, it also affects the thirty day rule. Say you put a thirty day rule for payment, yeah, it throws that out as well because you're right. using a date, and every time you regenerate, it, it corrupts it. Yeah, and I've just noticed it's it's coming back to me quite a bit. It it sounds like a bug, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's the interesting thing. Yeah, I yeah. think you need a static invoice date. Yeah. yeah. Is it too late? Patches is a welcome. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think. I think it should be a something minor, and maybe something we could look at it when some of you are coming for the sprints and all. Should have, be a minor. I have logged this, and some of our developers are going to the sprint next week. Oh, cool. Then maybe we can just work with them and get them yeah. up and run. Shouldn't be uh, difficult because we already know when it was, when contribution was done. Yeah. So you know what's the context, and just it's just a matter of fixing yeah, that. Everything else works. Really awesome. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. So coming back to the um, uh, recurring events, mm. if you use this so-called calendar eight months, they would be correctly displayed for the day. Yeah. 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 If you're thinking uh, this with a calendar app, yes, it would. Yeah. So feel free to just stop me uh, when you have any questions that. Image, so you can upload now also, like in the event configuration, there is a way to upload images for info pages. So it should be working okay. by default. Having not upgraded to 4.6 yet, what would you recommend? Upgrading to 4.6 or waiting to 4.7? Do you see any pressing features that you really wanted now? So then I would say just uh, wait for 4.7 to come up because it's with the, by the time you upgrade, it will be uh, 4.7 will be coming, so it's it's much easier. Yes, I didn't put the yeah, time. right. Yeah.
Any other thing? Yeah, we also change the report structure where I mentioned if you go to a report. By default, this is collapse, but if you click on columns, you can select which columns you want. You can define a sorting, you can have multiple options. Filters are grouped together, so you know how to filter settings for the report, mail and access. So, this is a new simplified interface. So, if you look at this, we also added this minor things which are inline like for a profile if you want to change the titles, you can just click here. and then say other information and just enter that is it. So, it is being saved. So, wherever you see such kind of dotted lines or a pencil icon that means the editable you can save and then it is saved. So, this is being done consistently for lot of UIs uh, wherever you see dotted lines are there you can just click and edit them. It is 4.6 onwards. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we, we are like as a good practice, we keep adding it to more and more places. So, it is being like 4.6 onwards. We simplified this uh, interface for advanced search where you can cross and clear the interface. So, if you do not need any option, just click hit and cancel just restructure it much much more user and more it's space. Yeah. Did it, did it, did it. Gone, gone. Yeah. We are back. All right. Yeah, so we have been adding this new widgets everywhere. It's one of the examples and some other places new select to and made it much more cleaner. We grouped the items together, made it more logical. Address is clearing the settings is now okay. I am searching for United States, but oops, oh, I want to search. You just click here, it gets cleared. Search. All right, I am not searching for right criteria. Click here, click here. All right, what did I do wrong last time? Four. Let me. Yeah. And the actions, an action, new action buttons I want to select. You don't, we don't have the traditional go button, you can just select and then it just goes to the action. So, it's much faster and if you are viewing, there's inland viewing. Okay, and let's look at the new interface. So, by default, We ship with this interface, but you can change the layout. Two different, and then there is. So this is much more responsive. You type in, you select your message template. It gets added. 
Now you select the seven to select this group. If it is this, this gets automatically updated. Tells you what which recipient. If you click on the list, it will show you the preview whom you are going to send. Let's say I want to include another. You can also exclude it. So it again becomes minus and automatically gets removed. You can have inline tokens as always. And once you're happy with it, here you have preview screen. You can preview the HTML on the first screen itself. So you are happy with the newsletter, how it looks. Send a test mailing if you want. Next screen, you get an option. Again, a summary of what you are. Then these are various settings. Whether to send immediately or send now. And then submit mailing. That's it. So it will be. And then it's going to display in a regular way, manner. Any questions? And the similar is a new A-B testing interface. Right. Let's say, so if you notice here, the inline validation, so you can see this red, so that you know it's required. In this example, let me say, let's select two different emails. Here you can select your target, 29. So let's say I want to send Maybe five percent. And this is nice drag and drop. Seven percent to this. Next. So if you see this compose so so for my some constituent I'm gonna send single column template. For my second I'm gonna send two column template. As always, you can preview the same. And you can decide when to send, when to access, and then say submit mailing. And this is the report screen which you can constantly look at and then assess based on how many are open, click through, bounces, or un unsubscribe. So all these criteria are based on your organization, what you define as a criteria. So we, we purposely made it a manual process to send which one as a final, if you see here. Because a lot of time people mention that it's not good for system to make a call and it allows administrator to make a call. Okay, I think this is a successful and then send it. We had a back and forth discussion about whether to do it as an automated or that human control it. Human won over the machine, so. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, one of the projects which was partially uh, worked. Uh, we got some work done as a part of a Google Summer of Code project 2014. So that was very uh, useful. All right. And Now uh, let's look at 4.7. Any any more 4.6 questions? Since we are running out of time, okay. I'll just go into 4.7. So let's say contribution. Arc. What's wrong with my system?
Okay, let me show you pleasantry. Patch entry data from the other features to data. New patch data entry. Pledge payments. So, a number of items. Two. Yeah, so, it so you can select the contact. Let's say I don't. Mm, okay. Let me add some pledge for this contact. It's pledging five thousand. So, it displays which is the next payment due for what's the amount due total. So, you can select the amount and you can adjust the payment amount or total of schedule it and let us say he wants to pay. Then, oops, pay by is required, cash, process the batch. And now here, let's say, let's refresh it. This is what we paid just now. So, so you can keep uh, doing the batch entry, which is needed. I think that's it. Uh, something is messed up with my 4.7, so I just yeah, I'll look at it and I, maybe I can. If you have any questions, we can just take it later. All right? Thank you.